Hey guys, Jocelyn here with Fantasia Elegance. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make this very cute wire wrapped anchor design. Real quick before we get started, I did want to give a huge thank you to everyone who commented on my last video and just helped me figure out a few things that were going on with my channel and specifically YouTube not letting people know when I post new videos. I think I picked up some helpful ideas from there to just kind of grow my channel and improve things. Of course, just a reminder, if you haven't already and you want to be notified when I post new videos, make sure you are subscribed and have clicked that little notification bell and selected all notifications. You'll just get one email when I post a new video. And if you don't want to do that, I also have a Facebook page where I will let you know whenever I post a new video so you can follow me there as well. As we get started, feel free to check the description section below for a list of all the specific tools and materials I'll be using, as well as where you can purchase those. But very simply, I will be using some round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, and flush cutters. The actual pendant itself will be made just with one strand of 20 gauge round dead soft wire. I will be using copper wire from RioGrande.com. You can use any kind you like, of course. As I said, we will be using just one strand of this. And the measurements I'm going to be using are for a fairly small pendant. Let me show you the exact size of it. It's going to be just about one inch long. There we go. It's just about an inch long, a little under an inch wide. So of course if you want yours to be larger or smaller than this, you can size your wire up or down accordingly. But for this size, we will be cutting a 10 inch piece of this 20 gauge wire. So let's go ahead and wind some off the spool, straighten it out here a little bit. So a 10 inch piece, for those of you in metric, that's going to be just about 25 and a half centimeters. And for our first bend, we are going to measure in from one of the ends, so pull out your ruler again. And I'm just going to mark with my thumb at 4 inches in, that will be our first bend. And what we're doing is we're starting at the top of the anchor, we're making this top little loop right there. So to do that, pull out your round nose pliers. And we're just going to put in kind of a little teardrop shape by crossing both these tails over each other. And as far as sizing goes, you want your little teardrop shape to be just about 3 16 of an inch wide at the widest point. And then we're going to grip that teardrop with your chain nose pliers and just put one or two twists in these tails. Okay, so I'm going to do one, two two little twists, just like that. Alright, and then what we want to do is create two more little teardrops pointing off to either side. So to do that, let's go ahead and pull out our round nose pliers once again. I'm just going to wrap it around. You want these to be a little bit smaller than that one on top. And additionally, you want to kind of have the tails coming from opposite directions. So you can see this tail is going over top of that kind of horizontal shape which means that this one we want to go behind. So I'm just going to wrap it around behind. And what that's going to do is allow us to twist these two tails together nicely to create a twist going down for our anchor. So I'm just going to refine these teardrops until I kind of like how they look. Of course you want them to be symmetrical on either side. So we should have something like that now. And as you can see, I have just a tiny bit of space between the teardrop and that little twist we made. That's what you want. So what we're going to do now is put in a few more twists. I'm just going to grip with my chain nose pliers on this little teardrop shape. I'm going to use my left hand as well to help just twist this around just once so that we've put a little twist in where that lateral teardrop connects. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, gripping with my pliers and my left hand. We'll just put in a little twist right there. Okay. And just double check that things are looking symmetrical. You can put in a few tweaks if you need to. So at this point, as you can see, we've got these two tails crossing over each other once again. So we're just going to put in a bunch of twists to create the kind of long central part of the anchor here, as you can see right there. So I'm just going to use my fingers to do this. I'll hold the shape we've made already with my left hand and use my right hand to just start twisting these wires on around. And you want to do this until this twisted straight length we're making is about 5 eighths of an inch long. So let me put in a few more and then measure it. Let's do one more. 
so that we get that 5 8 inch that we're looking for. That looks just about right. So that's the point at which we will stop twisting those two wires together. Go ahead and take them out so they're going more or less horizontally in opposite directions from each other. This is going to be the bottom center of our anchor. So what we want to do now is put in these kind of twisted arms on it. So we'll just shape these parts next. To do that, what we're going to do is again pull out our ruler, and you're going to measure about 3 eighths of an inch out from the center twist on either side. And I'm just going to mark that with a little sharpie. Okay, so just about 3 eighths of an inch out. We'll do that on both sides. And that's going to tell us where to make our first bend. So you have your marks 3 eighths of an inch out on either side. What we're going to do is simply create another teardrop shape on either side. So I'm going to bend those tails up slightly and then pull out my round nose pliers again. And we'll wrap that all the way around. Okay, so there's one. Do the same thing on the other side. And these are looking a little more circular than I want. I kind of want them to be more elongated teardrops, so I'm just going to encourage that by adjusting the shape ever so slightly with my tweezer nose pliers here. And I also have a little ripple in my wire that I don't like, so I'm going to straighten that out as well. Now we're going to twist this wire length here with that wire length there. Okay, and the important way to do this is going to be to grip the teardrop shape with your chain nose pliers and you're going to hold that still while you twist this entire shape we've already made around. And if you don't do it that way, if you try and instead hold the shape still and use your right hand to twist this teardrop around, what you'll get is one of these wires will kind of wrap around the other and it just won't look very good. They won't twist together equally, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to grip right here and using the entire piece, I'm going to start twisting it. Okay, and once I reach the center, I will stop. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, gripping on that teardrop and then twisting the entire piece around. And once again, once we reach the center, we will stop twisting. Okay, and you can bend both of those tails up slightly. And as you can see, we're starting to get our anchor shape put in here. And I want a little bit of a curve in there, so I'll just finagle that around as well. Nice little curve instead of having these two branches kind of sticking out strangely like that. We'll just put in a gentle little curve. Okay, so we've got our basic anchor shape. We do need to do something with these wires on the back, however. So for that, I'm going to take the longer wire, and I think I have room for one more twist with it, so I'm just going to bring it around to the front. Here we go. And we want to swoop this one kind of like a little rope shape in an S going back up towards the top of the anchor, as you can see on this one here. So I'm going to just loop it around so that it goes slightly below the bottom of the pendant. I'm going to put in kind of a swooping shape here and bring it back around to meet that twisted center portion. Okay. And then once it's gone behind it, I'm going to once again bring it back around to the front. Alright, and we're almost done with this tail. Basically what you're going to do where it crosses over this center top part is just to wrap it around that first twist we made. And you should be able to fit in maybe three, three or four good wraps around there. And you want each wrap to be right next to the previous one. So I'm just going to take this tail, wrap it around. 
and we'll just do that until we either run out of space or run out of wire. And in my case, it's looking like I'm going to run out of wire. So I'll just smush that end on down so there's no loose end to poke anybody. And if you had a slightly longer tail on that side, you would just snip it off uh, when you ran out of space to put in wraps there. Alright, now I'm just adjusting everything to make sure it's lying how I want it to. Alright, and then to finish off this last little tail, what I'm just going to do with him is wrap him down in this space I have right here. And on the back, I will snip off the end and just use my tweezer nose Zuron pliers to smush that end down into that kind of gap between two of the twists. I'm going to do that very tightly so that there is no loose end that can catch on anybody's clothing or skin. Okay, and you can double check with your fingers, make sure it feels smooth. And then on the front again, we're just going to double check for symmetry, make sure everything is sitting how we want it to. Alright, so I think that's pretty good. That is our little anchor design. Now for finishing this, you could do a lot of different things. You could make this into an earring just by sticking your favorite kind of ear wire on top of there. You could use a jump ring to turn it into a charm on a bracelet or a keychain. What I like to do is actually antique these because I feel like it really brings out the dimension well. Of course, this one I was showing you at the beginning has been antiqued. So that's what it looks like with the antique copper. I have done a tutorial on how to use both liver of sulfur and a product called Midas Black Max to antique your jewelry. I will leave links for where you can view those. And then for the bail, you can very simply just use a jump ring if you're going to turn this into a pendant. I do also have this wire wrapped bail design, which I've made a tutorial for, so check that out if you haven't already and if you're interested. I like to use cording on these. Of course, you can use a chain or whatever floats your boat. This is kind of a sneak peek of my next tutorial as well because I will be showing you two different ways of finishing off this either leather or cotton or suede cord so that you can add fasteners. So here's one way and this will be the other way that I'll be showing you in that tutorial. So that'll come out next week, stay tuned for that one. And of course I've got one of my handmade wire wrapped clasps on here. Again, I've done a tutorial on that on my channel, which you can check out if you haven't seen it already. So anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, found it helpful and easy to follow. Please leave me a like if you did, and also comment below if you made this. Let me know how it turned out, or if you had any questions along the way. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Happy crafting!